We're now going to talk about three additional definitions of linear maps. First, we're going to talk about the transpose, then the inverse, and then we're going to talk about the invariance of 3x3 three three matrices. The transpose of a matrix can have two different definitions, and their two definitions are equivalent. And the first definition is, if I have a matrix M with rows, M transpose is basically every row here. I'm going to take it and make it a column. And this row I'm going to take it and make it a column. And so on. So this is the new matrix M transpose. And so the component IJ of M transpose is actually the initial component MJI. So this definition depends on components. Another equivalent but more convenient definition is as follows. If I have a matrix from an n-dimensional vector space to an M dimensional vector space, M transpose is a is actually a matrix from M dimensional space to an N dimensional space and satisfies the following. For every U in R N, for every V in R M, M U dot V is equal to U dot M transpose V. The nice thing about this definition, and we will be using it later, is the fact that it does not rely on components. I have not seen the components of M or M transpose. I just defined M using this very abstract definition. But in reality, those two definitions, definition 1 and definition 2, are equivalent. Some properties of the transpose of a matrix. If I have two matrices N and M, both are square matrices, so they're linear maps from Rn to Rn. N M transpose is equal to M transpose N transpose. So you can see here when I transpose, I have to switch N and M as well. N plus M transpose is equal to N transpose plus M transpose. And in components, the component IJ of N M transpose is equal to N I K M J K. N K is summed from 1 to N. The determinant of the matrix is equal to the determinant of its transpose. And I'm showing it here just using an example. This is the matrix B, and this is the matrix B transpose. The determinant of B is equal to negative 110, and the determinant of B transpose is equal to also negative 110. We studied the invertibility of matrices, and we said that the invertibility of the matrices is determined by this determinant function, which tells me whether the rows are linearly dependent or not. From what we studied, the following are all equivalent. M is invertible. The rows of the matrix are linearly independent. They do not depend on each other linearly. The kernel of the matrix M contains only the zero vector, and the determinant of M is not equal. In that case, the inverse of M exists and is donated by M minus 1 and satisfies M minus 1 is equal to M minus 1. M is equal to the identity matrix I. The matrix inverse in R2, you can easily find it using the following formula. 1 M minus 1 is equal to 1 divided by the determinant of M. This is the determinant of M multiplied by B2 minus A2 minus B1, A1. And a 3x3 three three matrix its inverse can be shown to be 1 over the determinant of M, which is A dot B cross C, and three columns. Each column is equal to the following. The first column is actually B cross C, the second column is actually C cross A, and the third column is actually A cross B. So the M inverse is 1 over the determinant of M, first column is B cross C, C cross A, A cross B, where A, B, and C are the rows of M. In the study of uh, continuum mechanics, we're always looking for what we call invariance, and these are the values that do not change when I change the basis set of my coordinate system, or when I change the coordinate system. For example, if I have a coordinate system made out of E1 and E2, and a vector U here, as we said, U prime has new coordinates. If I choose a totally new coordinate system, for example, E prime 1 and E prime 2. Now we're always looking for what we call invariance. These are things that do not change if I look at a new coordinate system. And the first invariant is actually the norm or the size of the vector. The norm of the vector U is equal to U the norm of u squared, as we studied in Euclidean vector spaces, is equal to u dot u. Now what about the norm of the vector u prime? The norm of the vector u prime is, is actually u prime dot u prime, which is equal to q u dot q u, where q is the transformation matrix between the two coordinate systems, 
qu.qu. Now we started the transpose, the abstract definition of the transpose. This is equal to u.q transpose qu. But this q is an orthogonal matrix. I know that q transpose q is equal to i. And so this is u dot i u, which is equal to u dot u, which is equal to norm u squared. And so the length of the vector does not really change whether I'm using one coordinate system or another as long as they're all orthonormal basis sets. And similarly, the dot product does not change. So if I have u prime dot v prime, u prime is equal to qu, v prime is equal to qv, again, using the abstract definition of the transpose, this is equal to u dot q transpose qv. This is an orthogonal matrix, so this is equal to u dot v. So this is an invariant under coordinate transformation. For matrices in R3, there are three major uh, invariants that are very important. Now, these uh, invariants are going to appear naturally when I start studying the stress matrix, for example. The stress matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix, and I always am looking for numbers that do not change when I change the corn system. And the three important uh, invariants for any 3 by 3 matrix are the first invariant, which is called the trace, and this is the sum of the diagonal components. So if I have a matrix M in R3, the sum of the diagonal components, in fact, does not change depending on whatever coordinate system you are in. So the trace of M, which is the sum of i equal 1 to 3 mii, is the first invariant. The second invariant is the trace of m squared. So this is already invariant. And then the trace of m squared, the matrix itself squared, and all this multiplied by half. So this is the second invariant. And the third invariant is the determinant of m. And it's very easy to show that the determinant of m is invariant because I know that m prime in the new coordinate system is equal to qm q transpose and so the determinant of m prime is equal to from the properties of the determinant it's equal to the determinant of q determinant of m determinant of q transpose and these are equal to one so this is equal to the determinant of m the eigenvalues of the matrix are actually invariant under coordinate transformation so they don't really change in whatever coordinate system you use and you can see this by just writing the closed form solution of the equation, the determinant of m minus lambda i. If you actually write it out in all the uh, all the terms of the equation determinant of m minus lambda i, you're going to get lambda cubed minus the first invariant of m lambda squared plus the second invariant of m lambda minus the third invariant of m, which tells me that this equation is actually independent of the coordinate system. Because it's independent of the coordinate system, it means that its solution is independent of the coordinate system. And therefore, you get the same eigenvalues no matter what coordinate system you use. Eigenvalues are invariant. And so, in the website, you have a tool. This tool calculates all the invariants of a matrix. So if you input the nine components of a matrix and the three angles of rotation of a new coordinate system, then the tool will calculate the three invariants of a matrix before and after transformation. And you should try this by hand. And you should check that you're able to calculate these invariants and you're able to show that they're really independent of the coordinate system.